Hey guys, video three now. Um, didn't plan to do this in three videos, but here we are, so let's do it. Um, this one says, uh, same thing as the last one, we just need to graph it um, and then draw a line of best fit. So I have negative three, positive one, negative two, negative one, negative one, zero, zero, negative two, one, negative four, and two, negative five, right about there. Um, so there is my graph. I'm going to draw a line of best fit. I would say maybe through, and once again, we have to write an equation. So we're going to do our best to make sure our line crosses as it at an easy y intercept. There's no reason not to do that. So I'm going to try to make it cross through, I think, right there. Like, you know, maybe through my three. We'll see where it can go. Um, best place to put that, maybe right there through that three. If you notice my line's not gonna cut the data exactly in half, but it's it's darn close. And so uh, for my equation, it'd be y equals something x minus. I didn't do my best job, but we'll say it's uh, as close in minus three. Maybe I'll put minus like two point eight. It's close. I could have done a better job for that, but it's close enough. And then I need to pick some points. So I have a point right here on my graph, a point right here. So I'm going to rise up one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. I rose up six. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So I'm up six, left five. So it'd be a y equals negative six fifths to x minus 2.8. And when you do this, guys, not everyone's on the exact same line of best fit because it's kind of a judgment call, but it should be in a close proximity to each other. Um, this would be a negative correlation because it is going downhill, and I would say it's even so strong negative because they're still relatively close to that. I don't know if we'll have any good examples of weak ones yet. Just know that they'd be farther out here if it was. Yeah, feel free to take 45 minutes to an hour for lunch whenever you feel like it today. Thank you. All right, uh, zero, negative three, four, negative two, three, zero, two, negative one, 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 and zero, one. So that will be my points right there. Double check I did it right. Zero, negative three, four, negative two, three, zero, two, negative one, 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 and zero, one. Yeah, that one's definitely... Uh, different looking. If we look at the majority of our points, they are kind of located in this region right here. Um, this would be, we haven't talked about it yet, we won't spend a lot of time talking about it if any more after this, uh, but this is called an outlier, just like when you do mean median mode. If you have a number that kind of sticks out from the rest, um, it's still part of that data set, but um, it doesn't really describe the overall data set pretty well. So my line of best fit, I'm really going to attempt just these points right here. And I'm going to draw it kind of through the middle there, like right there. And I would say it crosses through the y-axis at plus 1. So y equals something x plus 1. And it looks like I have a point there and a point there. So I go up 1, left 2. So up 1, left 2. I go left as negative. So I could say the line of best fit for that graph would be y equals negative one half x plus one that is going downhill so it'd be a negative uh, correlation and this isn't super weak but we haven't had one yet so we'll throw that because that outlier there also has a negative weak correlation um, if you wrote negative strong i could see it i could see how you could justify that because overall most of the data is right there but just because we haven't had one yet i want to change it up a little bit all right, next one is going to look a little bit different, and don't tell Mrs. Sellers on me, uh, but I kind of copy and pasted a free preview of a worksheet without paying for it. So if you wonder what the letters in the background are, it says preview because um, I didn't buy it. So for this, we have to write the equation of the trend line. So uh, if you notice, they already have the trend lines. A trend line is just another way of saying line of best fit. Uh, they already have the trend lines written for us. And our job is just to write that equation. So we're always going to use y equals mx plus b, y equals mx plus b. And our b is always going to be probably the easiest one, the first one we should find here. And I'm going to say, okay, I have y equals something x. 
and this is going to cross. And I don't know how well you guys can tell that. It's above nine. Um, it's about halfway between, or a little bit less than halfway between nine and ten. So I'm going to say it's at positive nine point two five is where it crosses the um, y-axis. And to find the slope, I'm just going to pick a couple of good points on there. There's a good point here and a good point here. So I'm going to go up one, two. So my rise is my is two over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my run is seven, and it's going downhill. So that'd be a negative two sevenths x. On this one right here, it looks like it's crossing the y-axis about 11. So it's be y equals something x plus 11. And I need to find some good points. I have a good point right there, and I have a good point right there. So we'll go up one, oh, we'll go up one two, three, four. And uh, this is where you have to be really careful with uh, um, scatter plots. This is where I learn gets very tricky and uh, tries to trick you. Uh, because if you notice, the intervals here are one, but as you go up, the intervals are two. So even though I counted up one, two, three, four, I actually rose up eight because it's counted by twos. And I'm going to run over one, two, three, four, five, six, which is actually six. So it'd be y equals eight, six x plus 11. And that is a positive because it's going uphill. And we can say y equals four thirds x plus 11 if we simplify our fraction. Over here, we have y equals, and this is going to cross, counting by tens, I have a halfway line for five. I would say three. And then I need to find some good points. I have a good point right there and a good point right there. I'm going to go up one, which represents five on this, and over one, two, three, four, which is four because I'm counting by ones down here. So it's really, it's really important that you check your intervals of your x-axis and your y-axis to make sure you're counting correctly. Because um, it'd be really easy to say you go up 1 over 4, but you're really going up 5 because it's that next line. And if you tell 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, that it's counting by 5s. Right? Let's try these three more. So on this one right here, we have a y-intercept of, this is, if you can tell, it's kind of by twos. This is 8. This is 10. Uh, let's make it easier on ourselves to say 8.5 because it's not to the 9 line, but it's above the 8 line. So we'll say 8.5. And when you pick some good points, I see a good point right here. And I see a good point right, right here. That's a good point right there. I'm going to go up 1, which is actually 1. And we'll go over 1, 2, 3, 4, which is actually 4. So it'd be y equals negative 1 fourths x plus 8 and a half. On this one, it crosses the y axis at 8. So it'd be y equals something x plus 8. My slope is, I need to pick good points. Looks like it kind of goes through all these good points. There's a point here and a point here. So got to be careful. I know you're going up 1, which is 1, so that's good. But when I run over, that's not over 1. Look at my intervals, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. So that means the lines between are counting by 5s. So I'm going to go up 1 over 5. So that would be a negative 1 fifth x plus 8. On this one over here, uh, I would have um, a y intercept of 70. So y equals something x plus 70. And I have a good point where it crosses my axis. And I have a good point right here. So I'm going to rise up 1, 2. But once again, it's not going up 2. I'm counting by 20, 40, 60, 80, which means each one of these middle lines is counting by 10s. So if I go up 1, 2, I'm actually going up 20. If I go over 1, 2, if you look down here, it's actually counting by 1s over 2. It's going downhill, so that's negative. So I'm left with y equals negative 20 over 2x plus 70, which is the same as y equals negative 10x plus 70. 
So there's that. Um, not tricky, guys. It's just you're pretty much just writing the line in slope intercept form, given the line, given the slope. You just have to make sure that you're looking at your intervals and you're doing the correct intervals. Okay, let's get that one. And let's do this one right here. This one is a little bit different. They do not have the line of best fit, and you don't have to draw the line of best fit. You have to just predict, given the information they give you. So based on the scatter plot, predict the value of x when y equals 32. Well, this is my y-axis. y would equal 32 right about there. I would suggest step one, drawing a line of best fit. And try to cut through that data in half. Right about there. Um, I'm not in love with it, but I don't hate it. It's okay to draw it, erase it, and try again. So if y equals 32 right here, we need to find what would my x value be. So let's follow that across and cross right about there. And that means x would be about 30-something. Uh, we have 6, 23, 38, and 11. Uh, 23 is way over here, so that's not close to what it would be. Um, 11 is way over here. 6 is way over here. I would say that your best option here would be C, 38. Once again, draw a line of best fit. Try to cut the data exactly in half. Maybe like right there. Well, I hate that. Try that again. It's not bad. It says find the value of y when x equals 6. So now it says x equals 6. I go 6 on my x-axis, go up to my line, and that's between 7 and 8. So my options are 5, 1, 10, and 7. It is closest to 7. So that's what I would predict would happen when x equals 6. Draw my line of best fit. It cuts my data in half. Pretty good. y equals 5. So I have my 5, which is right there, go across. So I hit my line, which is not like right there-ish. I'm about between 8 and 9. My options are 9, 2, 6, and 12. It's going to be 9. So all we're doing there is trying to predict where it crosses um, when it is the other one. Let's do one more slide that. It says uh, when y equals 20. So let's draw our line to best fit, which is right about dropping stuff. About there. Nah, I think it's a little too high. I'm going to try that again. That's okay. y equals 20. So go to my y axis, find 20, go across, go across, go across, go across, go across. And when y equals 20, it's on there. There's a dot there when y equals 20. So that's definitely going to be 10. Uh, when x equals 1, so I'm going to draw a line of best fit. It kind of cuts this data in half. So I draw it right about there. Uh, when x equals 1, so x is 1 here. I'm going to come up. It's between 6 and 8, so I would say about 7. Um, that's one of the options when x equals 1. Let's look at my, if it's not an option, let's look at my line of best fit, though. Did I draw that line the best I could? Um, I have one, two, three, four points above, five points above, one, two, three, four, five points below. Um, the only thing I could think is my line's off the vertical. If you look at my dots, they're kind of going more diagonal, more horizontal. Maybe I'll redraw that to have a better angle. So it's, this is hard to project, guys. Uh, like that, see if that works. So when x equals 1, I am, I, I'm between 8 and 10 now. So I would definitely say it is closest to 10. And last one right here, we'll call it the day. Uh, y equals 8 would be the y-axis. There's almost a point there, so I would say it's, it's, I'm at about a half to 1, so d would equal 1. Um, so really all we're doing there is drawing a line to the middle of the data. I still don't like that line. I'm over two there. Uh, draw a line to the middle of the data and seeing where that line crosses wherever value it gives us. Um, please do your work. If you have any questions, email me, contact me. Uh, have a great day, and I will talk to you guys later.